Hello and welcome to my first video about Foundry Virtual Tabletop using the Call of Cthulhu 7th edition system by Vetterini. This is using uh, Foundry version 0 0.7.7 .7 and the Call of Cthulhu 7th edition system 0 0.4.6. So, let's go ahead and, and get started with uh, character creation. So, Vetterini, one of the wonderful things that he has done is he has set up examples here in the compendium um, with actors. You can see the 1920 character, the creature example, the goon, the villain example. If you click on it, it launches, shows you all this wonderful information about a character with uh, no stats. Yes, it is locked, so we would have to import that to be able to uh, use it. You can see here is the 1920 setup example for creating a character, archetype examples for a uh, pulp, a weapon example, another weapon example, um, an occupation example for various occupations from the rule system, and an attack as far as punch is concerned. And then you can see the skills that are listed. One thing to note about the skills is they have no information associated with them. It just says see the seventh edition core rulebook because you know you don't want to run afoul of chaosium. So use your rulebook to um, understand what these skills are and what they do and how they're used. Or if you own the book itself you can manually type in all this information or if you own the PDF you can copy and paste the information in. It is quite a large task to do so but it is possible speaking from experience. So let's move on with um, creating a character. So when you create a character in Call of Cthulhu, one of the first things you must do is you decide on your occupation. Well, Vetterini has created um, several types of items that can be made within his system, from talents from Pulp Cthulhu or archetypes from Pulp Cthulhu, to spells, tomes, um, other books, um, occupations, setup skills, weapons, and items. So you can make your own here. So we will create an occupation. Now if you're playing a traditional Call of Cthulhu game and you want to use the core rulebook and create a private investigator from the core rulebook, well you could create that occupation here. You would just um, enter that information in and I'll give you an example. But I'm not going to use an official um, occupation because I don't want to upset Chaosium so I will create a an occupation that um, one of my players requested a park ranger. Now he wanted to play a 1920s version of the park rangers. This is going to be a homebrew. This is where you put your source. You could put um, the Call of Cthulhu rulebook or the investigator's handbook if you were using that. Um, but for us, since this is homebrew, we will just put in what we have done as far as research is concerned. We'll just copy and paste our research about park rangers in the 1920s and 30s. Um, you can see that they had some various uh, uh, interesting activities um, or varied interesting activities that they participated in during the uh, 20s and 30s dealing with bootleggers and poachers and various things. So what we will do is we will just paste this in and uh, and save it. Then we'll go to our details. Since this is going to be a 1920s version of the Park Ranger, we will say classic. Um, in the rules, generally, you would have um, education as a requirement um, and maybe another stat and uh, each would be times two for professional skills. And so for us, we will say that uh, Constitution will be pretty important for a, a Ranger. And uh, we'll just go with 
we got some good options there. We'll just go with, with strength, though. Why not? And they didn't make a lot of money. So we can uh, give the credit rating range from about 9 to, uh, to 25. Now, skills. Okay. So we would open up this compendium here, go to our skills. No use in reinventing the wheel and, you know, uh, typing in skills if we already have them here. And what we can do is we can go through the, the list of skills and think about what my, uh, a park ranger might have. But I, I, there's a few things I would like to do to kind of show you the robustness of, of this system. Um, an optional skill group, we can talk about interpersonal skills here. Uh, of course, a park ranger would need some interpersonal skills to deal with uh, various you know, people that attended the park or visited the park. You know, he might charm them, um, he might fast talk them, he might use his badge uh, to intimidate them. And of course, you know, he might be a very persuasive individual, persuade them to uh, not, not feed the bears. And he would have one interpersonal skill. As a park ranger, he would probably have a firearm as well. Rifle, shotgun, or handgun. Let the player choose between those. Just to show you the robustness of the system, I'm going to allow one additional uh, skill. And because most occupations, or virtually all occupations, have eight skill offerings, there's three right there. We'll just find, uh, you know, five more real quickly. We'll go with a uh, track. Of course, you need to be able to track to be a park ranger. Uh, survival. That would be pretty handy. Um, I think spot hidden would be awfully useful. Maybe navigate. Don't want to get lost as the park ranger. Uh, natural world. Very useful. And now, now we're out. Even though he, I would really like him to have first aid. Um, but maybe that would be something he would choose as his, an, as his additional skill. So, we're essentially done here with the park ranger occupation. And then we can go over here to the actors and create an actor. So, we will name him uh, David Amundsen. This will be our character. We can go over here where Veterini has created this 1920 setup example. And we can drop it right here. And look, those are the statistics that you would roll. You can roll them individually by clicking the dice. Or you can roll them and it will roll all of them. That's a very strong and large park ranger. Okay, why not? We'll validate it. Now, anytime that there's a specialization with a skill, they want you to choose what that specialization is, and that's where you would type this in. So this would be an art craft specialization, and you could type in like photography or whatever. And maybe he's into wildlife photography, and so maybe he'll just uh, have that specialization, you know. Um, Probably by the general rules, he really wouldn't have one at all. But there you go. Same way with pilot here. He probably wouldn't know how to use a boat or a, uh, a plane. Of course, everybody could really use a boat. You know, maybe but just open seas navigation might be a problem. A science. And you could just still leave them as any and, and uh, enter them in by hand as you move through the uh, character creation process. Survival. Uh, winter. Maybe he near the close to the border of Canada needs to be able to uh, get out there and survive all right so we now have our character here with his name we we've got an occupation but we haven't entered that yet so let's go back over here to items where we created this park ranger and then we can drop it on here and education was a mandatory thing and Wow, his constitution was awfully low, but his strength was rather high, so let's go with that for professional points. And uh, his interpersonal skill? Definitely would go with, uh, with um, Intimidate, because he's such a large and imposing figure. 
and uh, we'll go with rifle shotgun. Now those were the two optionals that he could pick from, and then, then there was a list of skills that he could choose from any skill, and uh, we'll go with first aid. So there we go. Um, create select a skill of survival specialization. I think we went with winter. Okay, and there you can see his uh, the character. Right, massive damage bonus. Okay, but what about those professional skills and personal skills? Those skill points. Where are those at? How do we how do we enter those in? Well. You would click right here and it would open some options for you. But the strange thing is, you've got to have a scene in order to use this for some reason. So this, this may trip some people up in the, uh, in the Discord when they're asking questions about it. So you go over here and just create a little scene. We'll just call it test. You don't have to put anything in the scene. Just a blank scene. And now look, look, we've got options over here. We've got options. Look, development phase character creation that would have been the first step that I would I would have done usually but I decided that um, I would show you what it looked like without it first so that's why I saved this for now but now you can see there's a whole new tab available called development here and those are your points there's your occupation points there's your personal points your personal points go into this field your professional points or occupation points go into this field and these are your experience points that you gain as your character advances um, with their skills as the game progresses. So let's let's advance some. Let's see how this works. Okay, so credit rating. Well, we've got a maximum credit rating, remember, of 25. So if I want to put in 30 for his credit rating, it it didn't quite do it. It 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 went to went to 30 I don't I don't really know why I don't think it's supposed to do that we might have to uh, ah we're getting an error there okay now I see it so it's, it's warning us that it, it shouldn't be higher than than 25 so we'll just stick with 25 and it had already spent nine points there for us already as the minimum so it's, it's warning us if we go above uh, 25 and you can see that each of these darkened skills, these little pips that are darkened, um, they are showing us what, what our professional skills are. So, you know, we'll go with some, some firearms here. Well, why not? Some first aid. Um, make him, we'll make him good at these things. He's a pretty intimidating figure. Natural world, of course he knows a lot about that. He doesn't want to get lost. I'm slowly working my, my points out here. Let's see. I don't have a whole lot left to put in these last three. Um, we'll go with, say, uh, 25 in tracking, uh, 10 in winter survival. Maybe he's just not good at it. And uh, 20 points here in spot hidden. And now we've used all of our occupation points. We still have our personal points that we can put in any skill. Uh, maybe, uh, you know, he knows a bit about the law as a park ranger, you know, so he can enforce it. Uh, maybe he can jump around in the forest. <laughs> um, maybe he was in the Navy and boxed. Uh, you know, we, we can, we've, 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 we've got options. If you're, if you're boxing, you're also, you know, dodging. Um, you don't want to get, get punched. And there's his, his photography skill. We can, you know, maybe he really enjoys that wildlife photography, and then we can go and drop another 10 points here in, say, uh, Spot Hidden. All right, and there, those are all the points. They've been used. And then we can turn this off, and those are gone. They're gone now. And then we can go through regular play. And your, you know, um, asked to make roles you know as you as you're playing through the game you know um there's a strange plant can you identify it like a natural world role hey i did make it and look it automatically flags it for development because i successfully made a role all right um, maybe uh, a tree is falling toward me and i'm trying to dodge out of the way well i failed the tree hit me that would be quite devastating now i'm injured maybe i can do 
first aid on myself. Hey, I was successful. And look, it automatically marks it as a successful skill used. Then, when it's time for your development phase of the game, this can be unlocked. You can go to development and you can just click these skills. It will roll against the skill and automatically update the skill. Or you can just click development phase and it will do all of them at once. So let's just um, let's just click development phase to show how it works. See there went first aid and natural world and look it shows you rolling all skills for development you rolled a 50 out of 70 on first aid so you didn't go up you rolled a 23 out of 70 for natural world you didn't go up so unfortunately you didn't go up any skills but if you would have it would automatically roll the d10 placed those points in the experience and automatically tallied your new skill total so creating a character really really simple um, there are some steps involved you have to enter some data but it's well worth it. it it will make the process much smoother to make characters in the future you can roll up several of them very very quickly um, later on we can talk about roll tables and creating information to automatically roll these backstories you can see your gear and cash is already there take a look at items uh, combat and uh, other things as we uh, we move through it, through these tutorial videos. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope my accent wasn't too bad. Uh, keep on rolling, guys. Take care.